Welcome to the Nightly Rant with your hosts, Mike and Toria. This is the show where we examine society from a sarcastic point of view. If you like insane conversations, this is definitely the show for you. Let's get into today's topic. YPN people, I don't know about you, but I love helping out a friend. That's why I want to shout out my friend Brian Little and his podcast, Your Favorite Blockhead. This is the only show that manages to weave together peanuts and MMA into one heck of an amazing podcast. You can find your favorite blockhead wherever your favorite podcasts reside and at yourfavoriteblockhead.com. Do me a huge favor and listen to Brian's show. You'll be entertained and you'll help out a friend. Now, as I said, let's get into today's topic. I guess it's fitting that following our 300th episode, can you believe we made it to 300 episodes? <laughs> I can't believe we made it past 10 episodes, honestly. But following our 300th episode, we chat about Las Vegas. Was there something exciting that happened while we were in Las Vegas? Well, first of all, it was quite the uh, <laughs> tumultuous day <laughs> because... Well, the morning was fine. We needed to take uh, Yogi to stay with Alyssa. So I drove him over there. And I was originally going to go at like 1.30, drop him off, come back, jump in the lift and go. Because we wanted to leave by 2. Right. I got there right at 1 o'clock. When I was like, think about this, it's amazing that it worked out the way it worked out. And here's why. <laughs> I get there right at 1 o'clock. I go inside. I bring him in. Heather's there. So she chit-chats with me for a little bit, maybe five minutes. Then I go outside. Car doesn't start. Dead. <laughs> Car, dead. Now, Good thing we weren't driving. Important to note that with my old car, which is basically three years older version of the same car I have now, it had this happen multiple times, and it was the transmission control module every single time. And might I add, happened the majority of the time? In that exact in the location. exact spot. Three out of four times. Now, when you think about that, so it's natural to think that it's a transmission control module. So I immediately call, what do you call it, uh, roadside assistance. And, you know, kind of cool technology, but also kind of lame at the same time. Like, I can see how non-technical people would totally have just sat there waiting and never gotten their uh, person. Because I haven't even told you this part. This part's new to you. So you call in and it says, are you calling about an existing request or is this a new request? And you tell them it's a new request. And then they ask you, okay, I'm going to send you a text message to your phone and I want you to click the link and then I'm going to walk you through what you're going to do. Pretty cool so far. Sends me a text message. As soon as I click the link and it comes up on my phone, it says, all right, please tell us where your car's located. You know, and one of the results is, you know, in a driveway. So I pick in a driveway. All right. Now tell us this. Now tell us this. And they walk you through this whole thing. And then you, it says, all right, I'm going to disconnect now. Go ahead and submit the, the form. And we'll be, we'll be getting back to you about when someone's going to show up and what, who and what time. I hit submit. And it goes to this like white screen with like little tiny fine print text. So I expand the text and I read it. And it's what's called a JSON string, and it's used by programmers. Well, these programmers captured an error and displayed it on the screen. So, being the logical human being that I am, I assume it didn't take my request. So I call back. No, I didn't call back. I clicked the same link because, again, being a logical person, if that link has been used to create a request, it's not going to let me do it again. Sure enough, it asks me to you know, put all my information. I get to the last step. I hit submit, and it goes through, and it says, okay, you're going to hear from this towing company, but it doesn't give me a time, and it tells me they'll text me with a time. So in the meantime, I'm sitting there, and I'm going, well, we need to take a lift from, from here at this point to the airport anyway, so why not just have you guys come to me? It would save time rather than me 
having to wait for the tow truck driver, get in a lift, go to the house, then get a lift from here to go to the airport. It didn't make any sense. And it was the same number of lifts either way. Right. And my thought process was that if the driver didn't show up, with you guys there, we could push the car around the corner, park it, cancel the roadside assistance, and just go to the airport and deal with it when we got back. Like that was literally 100% my concept. Right. Would have been fine. So we're waiting and we're waiting. You guys show up. So I decide, all right, let's execute the plan right now. Let's just move the car. So one of the neighbors, Chris, he comes out and he helps us push the car. And my gosh, people, literally that car gets parked on the side street. You get out. I get out of the car. I turn. And here comes the tow truck. (laughs) Now I got to give them kudos. I put in my little thing. Please hurry. I'm headed to the airport and need to catch a lift. Do you think they listened to you or do you think it was just a fluke because of the time of day? I have no idea, but it took 30 minutes, less than 30 minutes. So that dude makes us move the car a little bit because he can't swoop his little thing in, which hmm, doesn't make sense because I've seen them tow cars from the sidewalk, but okay. You were like Um, a millimeter away from the curb, though, so I almost wonder if it was just way too close and then he so you mean if i don't ever want to get towed away i should just park a millimeter from the from the curb and then he can't tow me away it doesn't make any sense yeah but that's my point so he he takes the car and i say to him instead of taking it to my house which is what i gave as the original destination why don't you take it to the ford dealer and i call the ford dealer and i tell them what's going on and that the guy's coming great he says i'll do it Mm mm-hmm We then proceed to take a lift to the airport and all that's great. No problems at all. Got to the airport with plenty of time, no stress. But all through all of this, what amazes me to this day is that I wasn't personally stressed. Like, you would think that I should be super stressed out. He was pretty stressed and it wouldn't start though. But my thought process was it's probably going to be the transmission control module, which means it's going to be under warranty. So it would have gone out eventually anyway. So what do I care? They're not going to charge me anything for it. So let's just leave the car. So we fly to Vegas. We land in Vegas at about 6 o'clock. And then we go. They have a very cool system. You get into this uh, shuttle. Uh, I can't even speak. Get into a shuttle. And it takes you to what they call the airport car rental center. We rent a car there. We got this crazy Toyota. And we hit the road. Beep, beep, and it's, you know, you, you, you got us the best Airbnb you could get us. It was in North Las Vegas. So it was a good 25 minutes from the airport. and Which is annoying because the listing said it was only 15. It is a good 25 minutes. That's quite a difference. Easily. Yeah, it's almost twice. So we're getting there. And there's like this really weird off-ramp. And I can see from the map on Waze that it's a super strange off-ramp. <laughs> By the way, side note. I've decided that before the next time we travel, I'm going to get one of those window suction cup holders for the phone okay. or something because this is twice now that we've gone somewhere and I have to like keep the phone nearby in order to travel <laughs> around and yeah. it's dangerous and it's not comfortable for me as the driver. So I'm going to I'm going to have that that I can just throw in my bag and take with me. Okay. So we're driving along, and I, I kind of glance over, and you and Mitchell glance over. Huh. Now you can tell them what you saw. So there was a homeless dude, like standing. Well, I'm just going to assume he was homeless, but he was either homeless or he was weird. You can pick. And he's standing there, and apparently he decided to take a leak with his dick pointed at the road. So Mitchell and I, at the same time, saw this dude's penis. Now... She makes it sound like they saw it and they just went, oh, there was a penis. We were horrified. Horrified. They spoke about it the next 10 minutes as we drove. Horrified. (laughs) And then. (laughs) So we get to our Airbnb. Hold on. We turn into the neighborhood. The very first street we turn on, the first house I see on my right hand side has like a broken down chair um an old couch standing up on its end all kind of trash in front of the house and i'm looking around like well is the trash 
pickup day. I don't see any trash anywhere else but right there. Like these people just abandoned furniture right there on the side of the street. That was not a good sign. And of course, it's pitch black dark. So we go ahead and we, we pull into the Airbnb. Um, we get in. It's not exactly what they advertised, but I mean. It wasn't what they advertised. Let's be real. To me. Even not exactly. To me, the biggest problem was there was no door to the bedroom. Uh-huh. Second biggest problem was that the single bathroom was only accessible to the person in the living room by walking into the bedroom. Yep. But whatever. Let's be real. There wasn't a bedroom. There was a half wall dividing a very large room in half. Yeah. Yeah. So we decide, you know, that was the night we were going to go to the Bacchanal Buffet in Caesar's Palace because it was the last week, Monday to Thursday day that we could go there and get the discounted price. So we call up Lyft. And we're waiting outside. We were waiting inside because Mitchell was was afraid to wait outside. And all of a sudden I look at the screen and I'm like, oh my God, guys. Flava Flav is our Lyft driver. That's who's picking us up. (laughs) And Mitchell's like, who's Flava Flav? I don't believe you. And so I pull up a picture on Google. Mitchell's like, you're right. It's Flava Flav. Well... The guy gets there. He doesn't really look like Flavor Flav. His picture was just taken in a super teeny tiny, and he kind of looked like him. Super nice guy, though. Like, the nicest guy ever. Yeah. Super talkative, real outgoing, real comfortable with people. Um, I even tell him, like, don't stress it. Like, you can take us to the back side of Caesar's Palace, and we can, we're can we fine walking through to the other side if it's easier for you. Because, you know, I know what it feels like driving. And I know what it feels like driving in that strip. And it sucks. So, no thanks. So, Caesar's Palace. Now what? We went to Caesar's Palace and we had buffet. $55 a person. 110% worth it. Best buffet food I've ever eaten. So, if you feel like spending a horrific amount of money on a buffet, that's the one to go to. But why was it so good? Why was it worth the money? Well, they had like... They had, like, all the individual stations that had their own chefy person manning them. And they were, like, removing stuff that had been sitting there for too long. And, like, the selection was extensive. Like, the buffet went all the way around this enormous room. And then they had a dessert bar in the middle. They, I lived at the carving station. Like He ate, like, 47 pounds of what? Easily. Prime, prime rib, rib. Prime rib and brisket. That brisket was really good. It was so good. And I just kept eating it and 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 eating it. And that's what one reason why it was so good. But I also feel like it's one of the, because the food was so good and wasn't just kind of, eh, we all went back and ate more and more. It's like, it's like when you, you know, we really only eat turkey. Now, because of you in my life, I eat turkey twice a year. Once on Canadian Thanksgiving, once on American Thanksgiving. But pretty much the rest of the year, if I have turkey, it's like lunch meat turkey. It's not like somebody went and roasted a turkey and, you know, did all the fixings and everything. So on Thanksgiving, you look forward to the meal that you're going to eat. If you and could buy them here more often, I would make them more often. They just don't buy damn turkeys sell 24/7, 365 them. Do you here. not remember trying to find the turkey for Canadian Thanksgiving? We went to five different grocery stores. Anyway... My point is <laughs> that you really look forward to that meal. So you eat a lot of food. Yeah. Well, at the buffet, a lot of times, you know, you go in there and you you, know, you eat more than you normally would because you can. But it's not always that great. And so, you know, you might have two helpings of something instead of one. But that's it. And you're done. Uh-huh. This place made you just want to keep going back and get more food and more food and more food and more food want, and more food. I want to be buried with a bowl of that Borson mac and cheese that I had. Yeah, you liked that. Uh-huh. And and so it was really it was really nice, you know. And then we finished there and we kind of did a mini walk on the strip. We didn't walk very far. Because if we would sat down, you'd have never gotten us back up. Right. I mean, we didn't walk very far. We saw some funky fake showgirls out on the street with giant yellow feathers. You got to see your your um fountains. Fountains in front of the Bellagio. Uh-huh. And then we proceeded to say, "All right, it's late." I mean, we didn't finish dinner till after nine o'clock. Well, because yeah, we didn't start dinner until like seven thirty. Yeah, that's when we got. We had a seven o'clock reservation, basically, in our head. 
Yeah. But we decided, okay, it's time to call a lift. So we knew from the previous time <laughs> that there's like a lift pickup spot right by the link, the giant Ferris wheel. Well, there used to be. So we walk link. over there. Way to ruin a story before we get to the punchline. We walk over there and it's under construction everywhere. Like the valet area is a mess. And there's a sign that says, this is the part that I think is funny. Rideshare area this way. Only to drop you off in a place where cars can't even go. So you chastise me for skipping right to that part of the story when you skipped the most horrifying part of the evening. Ah, was it this night? Yes. So tell them. You're also part of the story, you know. You could jump in any time and tell your story. I just did. So can it for a second and let me tell it. So don't forget, homeless penis, that was one thing that they saw already. Now this. So we are on our way to find this lift pickup that doesn't exist behind the link. And we're by, there's this, like this little ground level mall thing with like all glass shops in it. And If like you know where Wahlburgers is, it's right there. And there's an escalator going up so you can walk across the Caesars Palace. And there is another homeless dude taking a massive shit right there next to the escalator. Taking a dump on the very busy strip. Now, I didn't look so closely, but Mitchell looked closely enough to realize dude was shitting into his pants that were around his ankles. Yeah, nice. Real <laughs> nice. So this was our welcome to Las the Vegas. Smell, though. <laughs> this was our welcome to Las Vegas. Um, a homeless man pissing on the street and a homeless man shitting on the street. This was our welcome to Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Lyft driver finally finds us. We make it back to the Airbnb. Oh, you my know. God. But that that's the Lyft driver that was all the way reclined but sitting up without leaning on the back of the seat because the back of the seat was all the way reclined. And then right. Mitchell gets in behind him. He's like, bro, you need some more room? And Mitch was like, yeah. And then he moved forward like a millimeter. And he was the guy that had like his windows <laughs> partially down. So the whole way, it's just going. Yeah, I think he was high. Oh, my trying gosh. Trying to hide it. It was crazy. That dude so, was a wacko. You know, I don't want to belabor all the points and everything, but, but you know, let's hit some of the highlights. I'll hit a couple. You hit a couple, okay? So, like, <laughs> one of my absolute favorite things about you um, is how, I don't know, It's weird to say, but how secure we are in our relationship. Because I do it for you, you do it for me. We we go the next night to Gordon Ramsay's burger. I'm telling you guys, that was the best hamburger I had ever eaten. And before anyone starts thinking, oh my God, you spent that much money on a burger. I'm going to tell you it was about $2 more than than going to Red Robin. Red yeah. Robin, that's always packed on weekends that people are flocking to. We got a burger that was a hundred times better than Red Robin for two dollars more, with a really nice bun on it. The toppings were great. It was amazing. The service was amazing. Everything about it was amazing. But we had to wait. Like they gave us a, a pager and said it's going to be about thirty minutes. Actually, no, this one didn't have a pager. They were going to text you 30 minutes. But even that, the service was so great. She says, okay, what's the number where I text you? Here, I'm going to send you a test message. Make sure you get it so that I, kn- I know I didn't make a mistake. Oh, no, I got it. And she even made me show her. Yep, yep, that's the one. All right, good. See you guys in about 30 minutes-ish. We're walking up. And remember, I talk about the fake showgirls. There's two of them going up. It looks like they were just finished with their shift. And they were going to get off the strip and be done with it. And you're like pointing this this woman out to me. And we both are chuckling about it. And like the, the, the night was just funny. Like we walked around that crazy little shops place, which we had already walked around earlier in the day. Then another highlight for me, and actually it was probably the most fun I had the entire time I was there, was going to Fremont Street. If you guys go to Vegas... And you don't venture past the strip, you're missing out on a lot of fun. Like unless you have small children. Don't take your small children yeah. to Fremont Street. This Fremont Street place is crazy. The majority of the Fremont Street experience is closed off to cross traffic. So while there are 
two places where traffic crosses through and you have to wait to cross. There's no cars driving up and down the middle of that road. Right. You get to walk back and forth whichever you want. So therefore, it's like crowded with people. There's multiple stages where they have like cover bands playing music. And apparently sometimes and, bands. And a music. topless nun. She was scary. And a man dressed up like Marilyn Monroe giving people lap dances. He was awesome. Um, there was a giant praying mantis that shot flames like six stories high. Which terrified all of us. We, we thought it was we a terrorist attack. We thought it was a terrorist attack. We really did. Which is the worst part because we knew it was supposed to shoot flames out of its antenna. But then when it happened, we were like, sweet Jesus. So those were happening? kind of those were kind of the highlights for me. I mean, those were two of my favorite um, aspects of being in Las Vegas <laughs> on that weekend. And we were there for a very specific reason. We were celebrating my birthday and Mitchell's birthday. And so that's why we went. How about you? What are your two highlights? Um, uh, well, the place we went for dinner on the last night we were there, we went to this steakhouse place that Mitchell requested was a solid highlight. That place was super, super good. Um, then the other thing I would agree with you that Fremont Street, minus the horrifying saggy topless nun, was really cool. Yeah, it was something we would do again. We like get there and we get out of the lift. And all of a sudden, all the casino lights go out. We're like, oh, shit. What is happening? Yeah, boy, did we pick the wrong night to come here. Right. But apparently, they shut down all the casino lights when they do the show on the ceiling. Because they have this, like, big arch ceiling thing. Um, so when we got there, it's, like, right at the beginning of the show. It was really cool. And they were, what they do is they play a song. And then they have, like, a synchronized video that goes, whether that's, that travels across the ceiling. And like has all this weird 3D technology and stuff. It was it was really rad. It was a cool, cool, cool experience. And I mean, overall, like Vegas was a good time. You know, we we didn't really spend a ton of time on the strip. We saw a couple of our good friends while we were there, Rachel and Amy, and um, chit chatted with them. Got to hear what's been going on in their lives. Both of them, I gotta say. Since the last time we talked to those two about what's going on in their lives till this time, both of them seem to be much happier. Just Always a thought. A good thing. Yes. It's an extremely good thing. So I think, um, you know, that was quite the successful trip. And, um, you know, we flew there and we flew back. And, like, coming back was nice. By the way, the car, for those of you who are in suspense, it wasn't the transmission control module. It was a dead battery. Two of the six cells in the battery were dead. And so it didn't have enough juice. It could power the radio, the lights, etc., but it didn't have enough juice to kick over the starter. So because apparently modern day starters take up a lot of juice. So you got an oil change, you got a new battery. It wasn't so horrifyingly expensive. We well, yeah, and then we had an oil change done, so we don't need to have that done again. So it was a it was a successful trip. Overall, we came back. We didn't stress. We had a good time. We had been saving money for a long time to pay for the trip. And that's always nice because just like our Denver trip, we could spend money and not be like, oh, my God, should we spend this money? Oh, no. You know, we were we were just so comfortable. Right. And it was it was a really good time. I oh, had yeah, a good I time. I forgot the other thing that was cool was the nuclear museum we went to. Yeah, that was, you know, guys. People think you're crazy when you go there, but I also talked to some other people who went to that museum, and they loved it. It was really cool. So if you're in Vegas and you want something to do during the day, go to the Nuclear Museum. It's super close to the Strip. Yeah, it's right across from UNLV. Yeah. It was a good time. So, I don't know. That was fun. Um, episode number 301 right here. And I wanted to mention to you guys that we really believe in CBD products. Like, tell them... Tell them what you use CBD for, honey. Um, well, I get those nasty headaches, like all the time, probably because I hunch myself over my computer all day. And I like to put CBD on my neck because it kills the headache real quick, at least for me. And then if there's muscle aches, put it, put it on the muscles. Mm -hmm. It goes away. I had, when we got back, um, I did something where I turned the wrong way and kind of twisted my knee a little bit, my left knee. And on the second day of being back, you suggested, here, why don't you put the CBD roll-on 
on your knee. And so I did. I slathered it all over my knee. I did it like three times. By the next day, no more pain. That's awesome. It literally heals everything. So if you guys want to get the best CBD on the market, CBD that's been lab tested and they provide you with the lab test results, CBD that actually does what it says it's going to do, then you need to go to yogispodcastnetwork.com forward slash CBD. And yes, we're going to make a small commission, but guess what? Whether we make the commission or not, you're paying the same price. Yay. So get on the bandwagon, get yourself some CBD, and find out what you've been missing all this time. And with that, good night, everyone. Hasta la bye-bye, Las Vegas. Thank you for listening to The Nightly Rant. If you enjoyed the show, please give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Google Play. If you didn't enjoy the show, please just ignore that previous request for a rating. This has been a Yogi's Podcast Network production.